Hi, I'm Jack Berry, a longtime golf writer in the Detroit area and around the whole state. And thinking of golf uh, brings us to a very famous player from uh, and student at Eastern Michigan, who is a co-founder of the Ladies Professional Golf Association, Shirley Spork. And she's uh, in the uh, Athletic Hall of Fame, I believe, here at Eastern Michigan. Uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, Shirley and her days. Shirley, uh... I met Shirley Spork at one of the alumni outings we had and kind of started finding out about her history and she shared some of her history with us. And so we had a uh, uh, celebration of Shirley Spork and an uh, honoree, uh, she came to that and at that event we created the Shirley Spork Endowment which was to uh, enhance women's golf at Eastern Michigan University. Uh, she continues to stay in touch with the university and continues to support the university as well as her endowment. And so uh, these are long-term uh, commitments that we do. We do not spend the uh, principal off the endowment. We just spend some interest. So she's had an impact on our women's golf team through the creation of this endowment. That's terrific. Uh, Shirley is in the uh, Michigan Golf Hall of Fame. Uh, she's uh, been so important in, in the with the LPGA and and when they have their championship, Shirley uh, always is included in, in the proceedings. One of our honorees this evening is Shirley Spork, who's looking very glamorous, I must say. Hey, thank you, thank you. I made a quick change from the 18th green. I run in the locker room and get ready for this nice celebration this evening. And I feel very honored to be part of the celebration with Mary and Betty and uh, all the support that they're getting for the, the junior, or for the uh, college girls from three, three universities is very special. And being from the state of Michigan and being from Eastern Michigan has always been special to me. And through my education, I was able to do a lot in the teaching and coaching of golf. And along with it, got to play a little bit of the tour and um, had fun out there. But uh, in the early days, there wasn't much money and there weren't a lot of tournaments. So I thought I should use my teaching credential and. Uh, I became involved with the Golf Foundation and the Education Division of the LPGA. I'm a founder of the Teaching Division also, and it, it's been very rewarding for me and to, to see how many people I've helped give pleasure to in, in the game of golf. One of the things that's uh, interesting about your very long resume is that you're one of the original founders of the LPGA, yes. and that had to have been tough before Title IX. Well, yes, uh, we tried to get together, and it all happened in, in the fall of 1949 and 1950 is when we started. And the first year we had 11 tournaments, and that wasn't enough to, you know, put bread and butter on the table. So. Uh, <laughs> We all worked for manufacturers and gave exhibitions and clinics around the country. Louise Suggs with McGregor and Marilyn Smith with Spalding and Babes Harris and Patty Berg with Wilson. And, and we, were, we were a very tight bonded group and we believed in the, the fact that we could continue on through the help of all our sponsors that believed that ladies golf and professional golf could, could happen. And it's through the efforts of them and Civitan groups that supported us in the beginning that we were able to survive. And uh, get to see all the country and we travel by car, very seldom, very seldom, once on a DC-3. And uh, we traveled uh, sort of in a caravan and um, we had little paddles and we'd wave out the window if we wanted to stop for gas or potty <laughs> or food. Okay. And uh, we, we all stayed together in the same place. They didn't have holiday inns in the beginning and we stayed in motor courts. We stayed with homes with families that were members of the club where we played. So we, we uh, gathered a, a great nucleus of friends throughout the whole country. I can truthfully say that I've been in every state and I have a friend in every state. 
<laughs> so uh, I think that's a real plus. And, uh, sure. Yeah. We were pioneers in that we normally played a course that was brand new, had never been played in a tournament uh, arena. And some courses we had to pick the weeds before we putted. <laughs> uh, we had to make the own, our own pairings and we had to make them own rulings. And, and uh, we uh, had to do about everything there was to do to make it successful. We used to take posters to all the little in the town we came to, we'd go to the gas station, the grocery store, anywhere we could, can we put a sign up, we're in town, we're going to play, come out and see us. And uh, that's, that's how we really got started. And uh, these long uh, friendships over the last 50, 60 years, uh, there are only four of us left, uh, founders, and uh, that's Marilyn Smith and Louise Suggs and Mar Mar Marlene Bauer, Vossler, and myself. And I'm the only one that tries to still play, and it gets easier and easier to shoot my score by my age. <laughs> you know, I, I, that's my goal now. My power is my age, so that's what I work on. Rumor has it that you were out there teaching today. You just can't stop that doing that either, can you? <laughs> well, I, I was stationed on the 18th green, and we worked on putting, and line mud and types of stroke and it was fun for me to to help somebody and uh, being a teacher you give something and I hope that it, uh, it helps them and uh, we had a few laughs and funny shots and it seems like everybody had a good time and it was for a great cause to to help uh, support three major universities uh, for their women's golf and I also have a uh, Shirley's Park Golf Endowment at Eastern Michigan. So anybody that might listen that would like to contribute, <laughs> we'd, we'd love to have them do so. Well, women's golf is doing quite well at Eastern Michigan and Michigan State and um, all these northern states. So it's a little harder to recruit here, well, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I grew up here and uh, we didn't have competition. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no a women's golf program and when I played in the intercollegiate I paid my own way, went to the tournament, uh, won the national championship, came home, was not honored because you weren't supposed to excel in individual sports. But yesterday <laughs> I got a letter from Eastern Michigan. I really got, finally got my letter, my E. I got my You e. did? Yeah, I got my real E. <laughs> so I can go home and look at my real E. And that's an honor for me. So you need a letter jacket now. Oh, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll get one. Sure got to do that. Well, it took them a while, but I'm sure glad they did it. That's very cool. Yes, yeah, very nice. Yeah. Uh, very rewarding to me. And Really the first national champion in women's academic golf. Well, after World War II, it was the first in uh, 1947. Okay. Uh, I think they started in 46. I don't know. But I played in 46, 7, 8, and 9 those four years and then started and then we started the uh the tour tour division and babe zaharis was the one that really started it because she wanted a place to play and didn't have a place or people to play against so she was able to convince uh, wilson's sporting to, to hire a tournament director and i'll, I'll tell a story to not about how i turned pro but babe <laughs> told me what to do <laughs> Very funny. Amazing. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say, and I know it's time to let you join the group. So thank you so much for talking with us and for all you've done to teach people better golf all these years. Well, the nice thing about golf is you're out in the air, you're enjoying, you're meeting new people, you're making friendships, uh, you're relaxing, you're from your daily stressful life. and. Golf is supposed to be fun and exact, and it's not. You're not out there to birdie every hole or be a pro. You just hit a good shot every once in a while. And remember that golf is a game of good misses. 